Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory, and today we have Nathan from Table Rock Lake in Missouri. Nathan had a Bigfoot experience one night out in the woods, and he wanted to share it with everyone here today. If you guys enjoy listening to Bigfoot encounters and experiences, please like and subscribe, and if you have an encounter of your own that you would like to share here on the channel, please contact me sometime by email or on social media. All right, guys, let's dive into this next Bigfoot experience on Table Rock Lake here in Missouri. All right, Nathan, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Miguel. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for getting in contact with me. Um, Nathan, if you would, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what you experienced. So, um, I live in Branson, Branson, Missouri, grew up, pretty much grew up on, on Table Rock Lake, uh, Stone County, Taney County area, uh, moved down here. My family moved down here when I was probably 12 or 13 from Springfield. So, uh, been a Missouri boy all my life, grew up in the Ozarks, but when I moved down here, I got introduced a little bit more to a kind of a country rural type setting and an area we moved to uh, Indian Point which is off of Table Rock and it's where the famous you know Silver Dollar City Park you know sets and um, we moved to a little neighborhood behind there and uh, as I got you know to learn the neighborhood and the area I, I you know started exploring the woods a lot more and and learning about, you know, the lake and, and, and just, uh, you know, kind of being a boy, I was a teenager. We, uh, I, you know, I made friends with the other boys in the neighborhood. So we would just, you know, roam the woods and do what teenage boys do. We uh, had, had a pretty good patch of woods around our neighborhood, kind of nestled up on a hilltop and then going down to, you know, leading down to the lake was, was, pretty good acreage of woods kind of um on each side of our road and like i said we come to we come to explore and know those woods pretty well over the years we kind of kind of felt like they were our own but uh most of them was private land kind of leading into core land and we got um you know trails that we beat down in there and we just i mean we we kind of knew it like the back of our hand there were nights we'd camp out there and we i mean we we could navigate those woods like without a flashlight at night you know that's just how much we knew them and um so we we had our favorite spots and uh this one spot in particular was was actually probably about a half a mile from from my house and from some of the neighbor neighbor kids the neighbor boys house and say as the crow flies is probably about a half a mile and it uh, sat down in, in the woods, kind of overlooking uh, a cove of Indian Point and could see quite a good ways. There was a, kind of a little uh, clearing and a cedar glade uh, there up on top of the, the hill, not far from um, our street. And uh, so we'd, we'd hang out there frequently and we kind of made that one of our little campsites. and. Uh, so one night, this was, I'd say probably mid mid summer. It was a comfortable evening. It was it was clear. It was uh, maybe it was before midnight, so it might have been ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. And uh, we we ventured off down to to the spot that we kind of claimed and 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 hung out at, and uh, we probably. I'm sure we started a little fire just for some light. Uh, nothing major. We had we had no agenda really other than just hanging out in the woods on a you know nice summer's night and just you know I don't know if we plan on camping or staying there the whole night. Actually, now that I look back on it, I think we did plan on maybe staying there the whole night, 
definitely staying there longer than we did. But so I, uh, I was 16. I just, I just learned how to whistle really loud with my fingers. And I was, I was like, well, this would be a really cool spot to just, you know, do a loud whistle. Cause it'll echo over the lake and, you know, it'll just, you know, it'll just be cool. You know, I was a teenage boy, I learned this new skill. I was just like, so I was whistling in it and I, and I can do it pretty loud, you know, and, uh, you know, looking back, I really shouldn't have been doing that because somebody could have thought, you know, something was wrong or, or whatever. But, and I, and I've actually heard on one of your shows that, that, you know, people have mentioned not to whistle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, so I, anyways, I was doing that and, and I, and I was probably being a little obnoxious with it and eventually I quit. So at some point, some time went by not a long time, but not right after. And then all of a sudden this loud shriek scream growl came from down below us from the lake area. And I mean, it could have been a mile, could have been two miles. It was, it was some distance away but it was still so loud that it literally went through. I mean, it went through me, you know what I mean? And, and the other guys that was with me, I know they, they heard it as soon as I did, cause there was no mistaken. And I think I've heard it explained this way too, on maybe one of your shows where it was like a, it was like a lady getting brutally murdered mixed with a growl and like a shriek like a it was i've heard i've heard coyotes i've heard foxes i've heard bobcats been in the woods a lot i hunt i fish i I kayak i canoe i camp and it was louder than any other predator that i've ever heard um in person or you know on tape or video or anything like that and it was it was an angry, I mean, it was very, it was very aggressive and whatever this thing was, it was agitated and it was upset. Like basically the, the message that I got at the time was like, we're, we're coming to find you guys for making that noise and you're going to be, you know, sorry that you did that. Like the feeling that I got. So once that happened, we, we, it was just fight or flight mode i don't even think we really decided to stay it was just like a run and go so this spot was up from the lake it was on the higher ground not not far from the road that we would exit on and off into that spot and as we were running i was one of the the ones probably further behind closest to the woods and and the lake and the deeper part of the woods and 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 as as i was running i could hear something to my left that was deep down in in the woods in the valley that was just crashing through the brush and all i could remember was saying was it's coming it's coming and so uh, at that point we got once we got to the road it stopped and because i think it knew that once we were at the road we were kind of back in our neighborhood and and i don't think it really wanted to go any further into the neighborhood but um a lot of this stuff like i'm just, I'm, I'm this happened so long ago and it's like it's it's coming back up now to me um but i you know i at first i i just i we shied away from the woods for quite some time after that you know uh, eventually i moved off you know indian point and moved away from the area but we didn't like we we all knew you know the, some of the other guys that was with me there's three other guys with me there was one my age and there was two other other older guys and 
we were all pretty confident in those woods. You know, we were, you know, cocky teenagers and, you know, nothing, nothing really scared us, you know, or so we thought. <laughs> but when we heard that, it was just, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know what it was at the time. I, but now I, I've heard, I've seen quite a bit of your shows and, and I've heard a lot of accounts and, and it, it sounds like that's what, what I heard, you know, I mean, it's just, I, I have no doubt now that that's, that's exactly what I heard. So. Yeah. It sounds like Sasquatch. Um, you said it sounded like a woman screaming, a growl and, um, yeah, it sounded like if you could mix like a, like a howl, like a, like a, like a, big cat or a monkey or, or, or any type of, you know, mammal growl with a, with a lady screaming bloody murder to, I mean, just like a, ah, you know, like, and it went on for a few seconds, you know, like it, it traveled and it, it traveled through that cove and it was, it was a good distance and we didn't take too long getting out of there. But by the time, we were almost out of there. It had caught up to us. So it covered a lot of ground really quick, way faster than what little ground we had to cover. I'm, I'm convinced that if we didn't have the upper ground and was able to have that exit right back behind us to get to, you know, our safe spot and our houses and our streets, like it would have been, it would have been on us real quick before we could have even, you know, decided to to make a move (laughs) so it it's uh yeah it it was and i felt like i felt like i was the one you know which i was i was the one responsible because i was the one who who was calling it and not even knowing it you know like Mm -hmm. uh so i i was scared too because it's like oh you know crap this thing it's gonna know you know that it was me (laughs) You know, like mm. it's just the feeling and, and the vibe. People that say that so. um, they're attracted to campfires as well. Yeah, yeah, we and we definitely had a a fire, and like I said, I I think we had even maybe intended on staying out there over the overnight. There was a lot of times where we would just have overnight, you know, deals. Like our our parents, they knew we were out in the woods. They, you know, they they knew we were close and safe, so they they didn't really you know, mind us being out there, you know, as long as we weren't hurting nobody or, um, staying out of trouble. But, um, we spent a lot of nights in those woods and, uh, but, you know, that was the first night that I, you know, actually unintentionally called one of these things up, you know, from, from whistling. And, uh, you know, I had no idea that at the time, um, that that could call one, you know what I mean? So, (laughs) But I mean, I could, I'm almost convinced I could go probably maybe not to that spot. I don't know if they're still there, but I could go to a spot and probably call one up if, if I wanted to, I don't know if I want to though, you know what I mean? Like, cause it was so aggressive and it was so, uh, scary, you know, and provoking the, the way it screamed like that. Like, so I, you know, I don't know if that would ever be a good idea or not, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think uh, if you went to another place where there were Sasquatch and did that same whistle, you'd probably get a, a reaction. What did the whistle sound like, if you don't mind me asking? So I, I was I, I can whistle with my fingers and, and I, I don't know, I was learning as I was using different uh fingers that I could change the pitches and the tones of it. Well I would I could get down to my pinky fingers and I could whistle, I mean, so loud that, that, I mean, it'd burst your eardrums if you're close enough to it. So I was, I was whistling with a real, the highest pitch whistle that I could possibly do. Cause I knew that that was going to echo out over the, the lake. And, um, just cause I knew that that was going to be the loudest and make the most, most noise, you know? So mm-hmm. I know the type um, of whistle you're talking about. I had a buddy named Tony that would like put his fingers together into his mouth and do this super loud whistle. Yeah. 
I can do it where to where you could hear a human could hear it, you know, definitely a few miles away if if the you know conditions are right and um Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool though i i have like a howl or a scream that i do that sometimes gets their attention i know a lot of people say it's stupid to wood knock or to call to them that that doesn't work but it, it can work and it's crazy when it does because um it really wakes you up and makes you aware that they're watching yeah yeah and and it just makes me wonder how many times we were in those woods that they, you know, they were around us at the time and we didn't provoke them in any way, but they, they knew we were there, you mm -hmm. know, like they, they knew what we were doing and, and who we, who we are, you know, they weren't no stranger. <laughs> yeah. To us. Did, did so, it um, sound like a truck was moving through the woods? It sounded like, yeah, it did. It just, the crashing of the woods and, and and i thought you know at the time i was thinking i was like okay this is a bear or something and you know looking back i don't really think there were bears down indian point there wasn't a whole lot of reports of bears around there at the time and i mean we would know it's a pretty small community but at, at that time i was just thinking i was like okay this is a bear and it's just coming after us and it's wanting to get us but it was so aggressive that I, I would think like a bear would be more scared of us, you know, or just it'd be more timid than that. This this was crashing through the woods like a like a Mack truck of and it was just like I, I, I didn't know what was coming. You know, I just <laughs> um, I, I knew it was it was an animal of some sort and it was out there and it was wild. And it was now after us. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, did, um, you guys took off as it was coming your way? Or? We, yeah, we did. We took off uh, shortly after the scream let out. And I don't think there was a whole lot of uh, debate or, or, you know, uh, deciding whether to go or not. I mean, we all looked at each other and it was like, okay, it's time to go. And we ran. You know, I mean, we, and it was, I don't even remember having a flashlight on me and I, and I made it out of the, those woods, you know, like, cause I just knew where I was going and it was just like a, a flight, you know, just go, go now. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it definitely, it, it ran us out of there and it didn't want us in there anymore. Um, you know, and I, I probably crossed the line, you know, with the, with the whistling real loud. It just, it, I mean, it ticked it off, you know, it just, <laughs> it set it off. Like, I mean, all those other times where I'm sure it was around us while we were in the woods and it didn't want to make itself known. Like that was probably just enough to just like, you know, push it over the edge. You know what I mean? To, so I, I, as a kid, like 16, you know, I felt like we didn't have a whole lot of credit and we might've told some people might've told family members. We never really talked them among, you know, I, I'm not really close to those guys any, any longer that I was with um, that night, but I know I could go back and get a hold of them and they, they would remember that. And whether some of them or all of them would deny it or, or say, yeah, that's possible. I mean, they can't deny what, what we heard, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, uh, it, it's definitely something that's, that's lived with me for a long time. I, I, I try to, I try to tell people, some people get entertained by it. Some people are just like, nah, you know, whatever. And, uh, even the ones that I, I feel like that want to kind of believe it, they just don't know because they they haven't ex they just haven't experienced it, you know. I mean, until you you're there, you just you just don't know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I shared a photo with you that one of the family members who um, took that. I don't know if it's a video or a picture of a Sasquatch at Table Rock Lake, but I sent it over to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah i I got on. Uh, oh wow. Um, I think I've seen that picture before. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, yeah. but so I, I reported this. So I, when, uh, 
the show Finding Bigfoot mm-hmm. came out, I got, you know, I got interested in, and kind of got, you know, back into this experience that I had. So I, I shared this account on, I think, BFRO, you know, after I learned about that there even was a BFRO, you know, website. And uh, this was, I was probably in my 20s. This was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, maybe 10 years after it happened almost. And, uh, you know, nothing, I, I don't know if they, you know, took it serious or what, but I never, you know, saw my report on their database or their, their website. So I kind of got, I kind of got a little discouraged and started doubting myself. I was thinking like, well, you know, maybe I, maybe that, that wasn't, you know, one or something like that. But, um, until recently I stumbled across, um, so yours and then there's another one sasquatch society or yeah bigfoot society uh, yeah i'm i don't know some of those i'm I'm a little skeptical on, on a lot of those stories that i've heard on yours but on on his but on yours um you yeah. know i could kind of we all got weird ones <laughs> yeah yeah well you know i mean when it gets into the paranormal i've i've seen ufos i've, hmm. I've seen orbs i've seen um, I've had unexplainable accounts, you know, that are isolated from that, but, um, yeah, yeah. In different areas, different times, but, um, the table rock Lake is surrounded by Mark Twain national forest, isn't it? I wouldn't say surrounded, but there's a lot of it out there. Correct. No. Well, yeah, there is, uh, not so much in the Branson area. It's the more, I'd say the more Western Mm-hmm. part of the lake that's a lot less developed because you get out to uh stone county you get out to like cape fair which i heard there's an account out there i think happened a, lo- a-, a while ago but it's on uh bfro too yeah. um so yeah there's 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 quite a quite a bit of mark twain um there's this, um a, a bigfoot cafe out there i'm pretty sure there's like a guy who owns like a little cafe and inside he's got like a bunch of pictures of structures and he's got like hair samples up there. And, okay. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. I think his area is off of um like where he found all that stuff is off a road called like Wooly Creek road or something like that. Yep. Yep. That sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there's another little town uh, called Eagle Rock, which is on the, uh, southern side of Table Rock Lake, and it's it's going out like you're going towards um, Cassville and Roaring River and Eureka Springs. And I don't know what the deal is down there, but as as I've been passing through there, I see uh, like a lot of Sasquatch like insignia, like on buildings, like they they have like like iron, like cast iron, like cutouts and stuff, and it's just like. It, it just it just caught my attention because it's like, you know, what's all this, you know, Bigfoot insignia stuff doing down here? You know, is this like a hot spot or or what? But yeah, um, yeah, Table Rock Lake is um, one of the hottest areas in Missouri, and Missouri is one of the top ten states in the nation for Bigfoot activity. I, I mean, I believe it because there's so much. There's so much woods, but there's so much development now, too. They're just, like, mingled, like, especially around Table Rock. Um, and Indian Point's a lot more developed than it, than it was when I was there. But there's – I was looking on Google. There's still a lot of woods there that could probably sustain one, you know, I would imagine. No, without a doubt. I mean, Florida has a ton of Bigfoot activity. And if you get like on the Bigfoot mapping project or whatever, you'll see like all the Bigfoot icons and it'll tell you where people have had encounters. And there's like so many houses and just like these small strips of woods and people are having sightings. So I'm sure that like really blows their minds, you know, like there's not enough woods out there, but yet there's Sasquatch. So like Table Rock, that's plenty of space. And there's, there's a ton of woods out there in my opinion. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, I mean, if a, you know, a tree falls in the woods and there ain't nobody around to hear it, you know, I mean, so that kind of, kind of makes sense, you know, if there's, you know, civilization close to it, then they're going to have more, you know, sightings. Um, so as I, as I was talking to you, I was jogged my memory 
um, why I started to uh, recount um, this this experience that I had my my buddy and this is all kind of third party third hand stuff that I'm I'm about to tell you so just take it with a grain of salt but um, my buddy uh, Craig ran into a guy at a gas station and this is is he's an old timer and I don't know how they got on the topic of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but according to this guy, um, he says that you can go out to uh, Bolshoals Lake. There's a, a highway called O Highway that leads down to Beaver Creek. And he says, if you go then there's, I fish down there quite a bit. There's a campground down there and it's right where the mouth of Beaver goes into Bull Shoals. And this guy guarantees said, if you, want to have a sash squatch encounter go down there and stay like three or four nights and, and you will end up seeing one or hearing one and i was like man how can he guarantee that and and my buddy's like this guy's got pictures with him like like says that he's got like photographs with him like the sasquatch like him and i'm like okay this is what like no way you know i mean even though i'm a believer i was just like that almost seems a little far-fetched but he's like he goes down to texarkana and up to washington and i don't even know how he, he i don't think he got this guy's contact information and like i said this is all third party stuff but um it it jostled all you know memories and and, and ex this experience in my head that's how i started so I got, you know, fascinated with it again. I looked on YouTube and I stumbled across your channel and uh, yeah, so it's just, that's how it kind of come back up because I, I buried that deep down, man. You know, like I was like, nobody's going to believe me. You know, I don't even, I don't even know if I believe myself, you know, but yeah, um, no, so. I, I mean, I believe you 100%. And um, this bull shoals, I've heard of it. I've had friends that go out there and like, fish for like spoonbill or something like that but yep. that's like half like that's almost in arkansas like half of the lake is in arkansas yeah. and half of it's like yep. in missouri and it's on the border yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's a hot spot for sasquatch activity and um david politis talks a lot about the ozarks with missing people and um it's a hot spot in the u.s mm. yeah man they're uh I, you know it's just it's they're they're out there it's a real thing you know um mm. I mean, and and i don't i don't like i don't even have to debate with people that are skeptical about it because i know now you know mm. and it's it's kind of refreshing really um because all these years you know i was on the fence about it and and i couldn't explain what i've heard but i've all these years i still go out in the woods and i camp um me and my friend, we go floating a lot. We're out in the woods every weekend in the summertime. I've never heard. I've been trying to hear something that compares to what I heard that night. And I just haven't, you know, I just. Um, you need to go back to that same spot. Do that again with your friends, with the fire and um, try to whistle. See, see what happens. Yeah, it's, it's still, um. You know, there's been no houses developed on that particular patch or anything like that. And uh, um, I, and that's that's crossed my mind. Like I've, I've almost considered I was like, to, I wonder if this could if this was just a fluke or if it could, you know, if it could happen again, you know. So um, mm -hmm. I on on BFRO, there's a there's a report on uh there's several reports in Taney County. I mean, that's got like, it's one of the highest counties in Missouri. Um, and there's a report for 260 uh, to highway 265, which is as the crow flies, we could see highway 265 from, um, our, our house and, and my front yard. I could see it in my backyard. I could see it. And, uh, I guess this, this was a, a pretty, pretty good account where that, a Sasquatch was coming up to, to this person's house and, uh, tapping on the windows and stuff like that. So, you know, with all those reports around the lake and then down DD highway and just 
I mean, yeah. So I, I'm pretty convinced. I mean, I just, but it feels good talking to somebody about it, you know? And uh, yeah, yeah, it feels it, good <laughs> hearing similar therapy. reports. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, and you know, what's funny is, is I've heard, uh, you know, my parents, they live up in uh, Christian County by Busick and there's a lot of Mark Twain to the east of them, but, um, they live close to this big cat sanctuary. Right. And, um, they've got lions, they got tigers, got mountain lions, they got all that stuff there. And I've been in the woods and, and you can hear a lot of times in the morning when those cats wake up, you can hear them roaring and they're getting fed or they're just getting up in the morning or whatever. And, and that's, that's kind of an eerie sound, but not so much because I know where it's coming from. But even with that, using that as kind of a comparison, like it, it's, it, it's not the same, you know, it's just, that's just not what it was. It was, it wasn't a bear. It wasn't a cat. It was, uh, it was a Sasquatch, you know, I mean, that's, bottom line so <laughs> yeah that's what i think too and um, yeah. like i said it's a hot area so i'm not surprised to hear that and um i don't know if you've ever been to the merrimack river like towards center missouri but it's like that out there if you um call to them or would knock mm-hmm. right when it gets dark things will happen like that same scenario will happen basically i mean i've had it happen i would do that call on the merrimack and um, they would like push over trees, scream. And um, one time I went there to do it again. Like it was, it was probably like a year or two later. Same setting, same time of year. And they came in and just started wood knocking. It was really cool. So like it seems like they'll do something different every now and then. Yeah, yeah. They sure they definitely have their their habits and their signature moves. But uh, yeah. I mean, they're, it's, it, they're, they're very intelligent. Somebody asked me, you know, well, do you think they're smarter than humans? And I'm like, you know, when it comes to the woods, yeah, they are like, no doubt. What, what would make us, you know, be so, you know, vain or whatever to think that they don't, you know, that's where they live. That's their, I mean, it's their domain. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I got a I got a whole new respect for the woods and and for this creature that uh um yeah man it's it's just it's fascinating you know it's uh I, I honestly I honestly can get and, and I'm this by this nature it's it's kind of it it grabs a hold of you you get obsessed with it it's just like man I want to hear more uh, stories and accounts because then it's just like, it just confirms, you know, just confirms. So, yeah, absolutely. It's one thing listening to stories online and finding out they're real and trying to get into it. But when you experience the activity, it brings it to a whole nother level and you really get drawn in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting here looking at this, this picture and that's, uh, it looks pretty authentic to me. Uh, I I would say, I mean, if I had to guess, I mean, I would say that's probably 90% sure that that would be, it's a little fuzzy, but um, that doesn't look like a guy in a suit that just, yeah. Okay. So yeah, there's other shots. You see that? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, that's a little bit more clear. Uh, yeah, I think these are like, this is from one of the family members, like the person that originally took it passed away, but one of the surviving family members, um, took a picture or sent me the photos. But to me, I mean, it looks pretty authentic. You can definitely see fur. You can tell it's upright. It has massive arms. And, um, they got different shots of it on the lake. That's Table Rock Lake. So, um, that's some of the best evidence I've seen next to like the paddy footage. I don't know if this is from an actual video or if it's just like a bunch of still shots. Yeah. I was going to say that that definitely looks similar to the Patterson 
one, no doubt. I mean, the third one, you can see the bottom of its foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, The second one, you can see like a massive arm, like the forearms just as big as like the bicep part and the shoulder. Oh yeah, no doubt that. I mean, (laughs) if that's a suit, then they, they, they get the winning award for best suit ever because, um, I mean, it could be, but they're out there and there's a ton of stories. So, I mean, I I think it's a Sasquatch, but yeah, it could be a suit. Very, very likely. uh, There's part of me, I'm like a, a skeptical optimistic, you know, where I still try to look at things skeptical, but I, I, I know, I know what I experienced, man, you know, and, and it's just, there's just no doubt that that's what it was. And I'm, I'm leaning towards what, what I'm seeing here is, is definitely one too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it being since it's on table rock and, uh, I mean, that just, that gives it even more, you know, weight to, um, yeah, it could be the actual creature that you encountered that night or, part of the family clan you never know i mean it's from the same area so it's very possible these things move around a lot yeah i think was this uh was this from dd highway or do you know i'm not sure i just know table rock lake i'm gonna have to look up the email and see what she said about it okay because uh yeah all those roads that lead down into the end of the lake when you get closer to the lake you're not far from them you know what i mean as I mean, we would, we would kayak and camp. We would kayak from one like DD highway, which is all the way in Kimberling city. I mean, you'd have to drive 45 minutes around the lake, but you know, we could get to it in, you know, 10 or 20 by boat, you know? (laughs) So, um, yeah. And I'm sure it's good fishing there. Is the water pretty clean for the most part? Oh yeah. Table rocks, table rocks are very clean. I, um, I have friends that that are from Lake of the Ozarks and, and they like, they come down here and they're just like, wow, man, this is crazy. And, uh, our creeks to, um, Bull Creek, my folks live up off of, uh, 65 highway and it's, um, there's Bull Creek that runs through there. Um, there's Busick, there's uh, Busick National Forest, not national, but state park. And uh, we've, so, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fresh streams and um, yeah, t- Table Rock's pretty, I love it. It's, it's a great lake and uh, it's, you know, it's my home. I, I know it really well. I know the area really well, um, just for living here for so many years. So yeah. um, I think, you know, you can, Honestly, it's it's a wonder. My parents they live pretty deep in the woods, and um, they've got several acres. And, and they're it's a wonder out there that I haven't had any encounters out there because um, I I'd lived with them for some periods of time and whatnot. But there's been times where I have been walking out out there at their place, and just you get this eerie feeling like somebody or something's watching you, and and I always thought it was just like maybe something spiritual or, or whatnot, because you know I, I know that 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 stuff exists too as well. But um, you know, it could it could be them too? You know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I'd like to yeah. do an investigation at Table Rock Lake one day. I interviewed a guy from St. Clair right off the Merrimack, and he told his story on one of my videos. He ended up moving out to Table Rock Lake, so. If you ever needed anyone to talk to, I I know somebody. Okay, good mm-hmm. deal. Well, yeah, if you uh, if you decide to to make it down this way, and uh, I could I could show you the spot, and uh, you know, take take you to where, take you right to where I had had my encounter, and uh, you know, it could be a part of your part of your investigation if if you wanted it to be you know yeah so okay i'll keep you in mind and um i'll certainly contact you when i head out that way and maybe we can set something up if you want to take me to that spot yeah yeah man that'd be awesome i'd I'd, I'd enjoy that it'd be cool okay is there anything else that you experienced nathan that you'd like to add to the interview uh no man i think uh 
pretty much covered it all, man. I appreciate you taking the time to, to listen to it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you logging down your report here on Sasquatch Theory. It really means a lot, man. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. Take care, man. You too. Bye. All right, Nathan, thank you very much for sharing your Bigfoot experience with all of us here on Sasquatch Theory. And if anyone out there is listening to this and has had an encounter or an experience at Table Rock Lake, feel free to contact me. And this goes for anyone in North America or anywhere in the world. If you've had a Bigfoot encounter, please contact me sometime. I would really like to hear about it. Here in the near future, we have some new Bigfoot films coming out, and I know you guys really enjoy the video portions of Sasquatch Theory, so you guys will have that to look forward to. And I do too. I like getting out there in these encounter spots and interviewing people where they walk me through the area and talk about what they've seen and experienced. It's a lot of fun, and I know you guys really enjoy that too. If anyone out there is going through a dark time in their life, just know that things will get better and you have to have faith. You have to power through it. And a lot of us go through this. It's part of being human. So just know that you're not alone. So you just have to believe that you're going to get better and things won't always be the same. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone for all the support with the channel and for all the kind words and the comments. It really means a lot. And you guys are extremely amazing. I also want to thank the people who have donated to the channel and you guys have kept this channel going and I really appreciate it. We're not buying boats, Lamborghinis and houses and mansions. We are just running the channel and doing research. So thank you everyone for all the support. All right. Thank you to all the people who have tuned in today and I really appreciate you guys for listening until the next one. Take care and be safe.